to uh, spend some time and divide my presentation in two parts. The first one, I will, would like to talk about Atlassian as a company. Just introduce it to you, and I'm sure you know Jira, you know Confluence, you know some of our products and the plugins that make it so great. But you may not know so much about the company and where we came from. Just would like to give you that idea. Um, and then the second part, I would like to share with you the news that we uh, announced to the world during our annual event, which is called Summit in, uh, in, in California. So it was last year, so it's not so news anymore. But what I would like to, to share with you is what we announced and what we delivered and what is coming. So maybe you know, that, that will be some new information for you to, to absorb. Anyways, um, <coughs> Tibor was talking about the company, about um, our values and uh, you know, the passion that, that we generate around. So the, the mission statement is something like that. We really believe that we can contribute to, to the world through the power of software. And we're, we're going to see in a moment. But first of all, let me talk a little bit about myself because there's always a confusion about what I do uh, who I am, where I come from, and what it's in, in particular where this weird name comes from. You know, so basically, I am an expert manager. Someone approached me during the break and said, "Oh, you are the expert. I can ask you all the questions." Uh, no, not really. I manage the good people that are the experts. So I help them across in the year to uh, you know be the awesome partners of Atlassian. But I myself am not even very technical. Right. So um, I. I've got more than 15 years of channel management and I joined up last and it, it's something really um, a milestone in my career. Anyways, Vlad Cavalcanti is actually Vladimir Cavalcanti. So what people ask me, are you from Russia? I said, no, not really. So Cavalcanti sounds Italian, you must be Italian. No, we are, I have some Italian family, but I'm not Italian. It turns out I am Brazilian. And it goes like, ah, all right, you're Brazilian. And like, Every Brazilian, you know, I love football. I tried my career in football, didn't work out, so I ended up in IT. Um, so, because I couldn't play that well, I used to play when I was a kid with a toy that I wonder if you guys ever heard or ever seen something like that. Yep. You have, right? Funny enough, I, I, was, I was researching and in Hungary you guys play with that. Most of the countries I visit, they go like, what is this? You know, but uh, apparently you guys know what, what it is. Exactly. So, as non-tech as possible, right? But hey, I, I loved it. I had great fun when I, when I was young playing with this. But fast forward to today, 2015, my kids play with this, you know? <laughs> yeah, and they love my kids. I don't, of course not. Um, so, but the question I would like to ask myself and you guys and, and think about it is, what changed in the world from this to that? And the answer can be, um, materializing one <coughs> word actually, which is software. So uh, Mark Andreessen from HP has this famous sentence from a couple of years ago saying that software is eating the world. And if we think about it, it's true. We take it for granted these days because hey, yeah, I have my uh, smartphone and sometimes it's not as smart as it should be, but it has <laughs> plenty of software in it and software is everywhere. And um, software is now really becoming mainstream also in various projects which are mission critical. So take NASA, for example, and, uh, and this rover mission to Mars. And these are some of the examples where we thought that we, as Atlassian, contributed to some key software projects. This one, for example, from NASA. What about this sleek, fantastic car that is becoming, say, you know, the Apple in terms of design of the auto industry? Um, these guys are changing the mentality of even, you know, the uh, Americans that are very proud of the big cars that consume lots of fuel, but they're thinking twice now, hey, this car is nice, it's uh, very um, environmentally friendly, and it's, it's a great thing to, to, to have. So you help the, 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 the environment and yet you, you have a sleek car. And they say that, in fact, well, this is a particular car, but even a normal car that we drive these days has more lines of codes than Facebook and LinkedIn together. So there you go. You know, software is really getting everywhere. Um, this, this company produces a 
robot or is designing robots that will be used in disaster um, areas like you know, Fukushima or uh, earthquakes. Instead of putting people in, in danger, we can use robots to, to assess the, 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 the situation first. Again, Atlassian uh, contributed to, to their development in terms of the software part of the project. Um, and last but not least, Cochlear is an Australian company that produces um, hearing aids for those people who have difficulties hearing. And again, we think, hey, this is a, a nice contribution to, again, change the world, even if it's the world of that particular child that is now able to listen to the, uh, to the sounds of the sea. Right, but we, we know that behind all this software project, all these lines of code, there are people, people like you guys, that produce lines of code and change the world little by little. So that's where Atlassian comes in, and that's what I would like to share with you here about Atlassian. Um, it started in 2002, you may have known. Um, two guys in, um, in Australia founded it, Mike and Scott. Um, um, Scott usually tells the story of the very first order they, get, they got. It was Saturday um, in Australia, so it was still Friday in the US. And they were having a party, a little bit dizzy with, uh, with some um, drinks. I don't know what exactly, but they were. The phone rings, and someone's like, Hey, um, I like your product and I want to buy it, but I have some technical issues. And they go, like, Oh, okay. So he goes upstairs, locks himself in a, in a, in a room and start listening to the guy and helping him through. Resolve is a technical issue, the guy says, fantastic, I want to buy it. Here's my credit card. And he goes back to the part like, hey, we, we, we <laughs> sold the very first Jira. So that was a milestone. <laughs> that was in 2002, a very modest um, revenue in, in that year, two people only. Again, if we fast forward to 2012, when I started with the company, we were already 560 people, three offices around the world, and the revenue was already impress impressive. More impressive even was two years later, we doubled that much and we more than doubled, the, we tripled in, in fact, the number uh, of, uh, of employees. It's even more than 1,500 now. We had more offices uh, around the globe and very, very important, we have this network of awesome, impressive partners that we call experts that help our, our customers, you know, uh, choose, implement, train, whatever they need to use our, our solutions. So here we are, we have over 43,000 companies around the world using Atlassian, so we're not so small anymore, we're getting there. Um, we have companies from all sorts of um, uh, sizes and, uh, and sectors, and um, even Gartner recognized us next to the big guys, to IBM and, uh, and Microsoft in the ALM category. So it was a, a, a very important milestone as well for us. So, but what is that that we do? Uh, what, what do we exactly offer in terms of the entire uh, stack of solutions? So again, I'm not a software developer. You guys uh, will know this much, much better than, than I do, but in a, in a typical, roughly speaking, in a typical, um, life cycle of, of a software project, you probably start with collaboration, ideas, you know, just brainstorming, then start tracking, then start developing, producing the service and back into collaboration, and then and the cycle goes on and on. So if I could try and place the Atlassian products there just to give you an idea where we fall into, it could be a good start. So for example, if we start with collaboration, we have Confluence, that you guys probably know very well, and HipChat. By the way, anyone knows or uses HipChat here? You don't count. You don't count. <laughs> <laughs> very good. A, a, few, uh, a few hands up. All right. So that's an ultimate collaboration. We're going to talk more about HipChat in, in a moment. Jira, of course, you know, it's the ultimate tracking uh, solution. To develop, we have a, a bunch of developing solutions. I'm highlighting Stash as part of the Git uh, um, adoption that is increasing more and more. Um, but then we have also but the bucket bamboo, as you probably know. We have clover, fisheye, crucible, and in terms of the service, Jira Service Desk. So this is a broad and simplistic way of trying to place our products in the context of a, an ALM um, lifecycle. 
Yes, so most people say, all oh, right, yes, yeah, so Atlassian produces um, great products for software developers. True, but it doesn't stop there. What we see is that more and more development teams are using it, not only the developers, but other areas inside the IT department, but even outside of the IT department. Um, our products are becoming very, very popular and very important. So we see support teams, we see HR, we see marketing, finance, you name it. Everyone now is capable of, of benefiting from the Atlassian product. So we say that every team is what we are aiming at in terms of the, the Atlassian. Right, that was the first part of my presentation, um, just introducing you to a little bit um, about Atlassian. And now I'd like to jump into, I think, could be very interesting for you to hear what we announced uh, during summit. Most of you probably have heard about it. You have, may have seen the videos that are posted on our pages a couple of weeks after the event. Um, but there were some key announcements that I would like to, to um, share with you. The first one was regarding enterprise. The same way, as I said before, that we say evolved from offering products only to software developers, to every team, we also grew our offering from just you know, smaller companies to enterprise uh, companies, large implementations where performance is key and very, very important. So um, we introduced, um, a, let's say, a package of solutions with Jira, Confluence and Stash, which we'll see in a minute, and we added premium support. So premium support is like someone who knows the account, who knows the, the customer, who knows the implementation, and you don't need to explain you know, your uh, questions and situation time and time again when, when you open the ticket. A technical account manager will work together with our experts to guide the implementation of large uh, uh, enterprises. And we have, of course, the uh, experts badged as enterprise experts, so they are ready to offer this sort of solutions. So we started with Jira Data Center. That was the first um, Jira flavor that we added to the enterprise family. It was about a year ago that we introduced that. So it's all about high availability, instant, instant scalability, and in a way that it performs much better than a single instance of, of Jira at each of the projects. But then we quickly uh, added Confluence and Stash, and those were the two announcements of, uh, of, of Summit, Confluence and Stash Data Center in particular. So it complements the, the, the entire offering, so not only the uh, tracking, development uh, um, solution, but also the collaboration and the development in terms of the, the Git stack. So that was the enterprise. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very light on, on these ones. Maybe I'll go a little bit deeper in, uh, in Jira portfolio, but that was the, uh, the, the main uh, announcement, the main bang of the, uh, of the event. Jira portfolio, that is a, a great milestone again for us because um, lots of people ask, well, Jira is great, but doesn't have any, any PPM um, uh, feature, right? So Jira portfolio adds to that. It's, um, it's all about planning at scale. It's connecting the reality with, uh, with the business and, and, uh, and, and the IT department so that you can track not only one project, but several projects at, at once. So maybe the best way to show this is how we at Atlassian use Jira Portfolio to develop Jira Portfolio. So, for example, here is, is one, uh, one screenshot where we see you know, our targets, what we plan and do in the various versions and the various features that we want to, to implement. So we create our, um, our stories, our initiatives, like, like you can see here, the things and, and the initiatives different ones and then we start you know labeling them to organize our, our work and Jira portfolio helps you um, with uh, resource planning so how many resources do I have for each of those steps of my project and if I add more people will that impact on the on the, on the project well you can see this this stack of um, of your projects against the SLAs and you can track and see if, if you are doing well or not. So, for example, there is there's a, um, a particular feature that customers are asking us in uh, Jira portfolio, which is the cost planning and reporting. 
So the question here that we were asking ourselves is, shall we include this one in the upcoming version, the version 2.0? Will that impact on, on our release date? Will that be okay with, uh, with our managers if, if, if there is any delay? But first of all, is there an impact? So we added that and a yes, there, there would be a, a delay as you can see on the, on the, uh, on the red flag there. So then, then it becomes again a collaboration issue, discuss internally, can we live with that? Can our customers wait for that? Or shall we wait for the next release before we, we add this? So you can see what is the target and what is your actual and, and compare and, and plan ahead. So this is just a small example about what Jira Portfolio can do. It, it's a great tool and has been very, very uh, well taken by, by the community. So it's about connecting the plan to your reality. Um, and it can also help with uh, automatic updates and it gets visibility not only for uh, the IT team but the business side of, uh, uh, of, of the teams can also see what is going on in there. So there are lots of videos, um, you, of course as usual with Atlassian you can download and install it very easily and it's part of the Jira family again. So Jira portfolio was a, a big announcement. The other one was HipChat. So again, I, I asked uh, before who uses it. For those of you who don't know what um, HipChat is, in my personal opinion, it changed my professional life tremendously because I don't need to send email. You know, it's, I don't know if you guys suffer from that, but uh, the, the email blow that we have in our inbox when you travel and you come back and uh, all those emails that you have to answer one by one, and wait for the person to reply to you, you know. It's, uh, it's different. With HipChat, it's all instant. It's all about communication wherever you are, with your smartphone, with your uh, with, with a computer, and you can team up with your co-workers and exchange things like, for example, right now, I was taking pictures of the event and I was sharing with my colleagues and say, hey, I'm this, I'm this great event in Budapest. There are 80 plus people in the room when watching that and they were replying to me, great, wow, fantastic, how, how, how is it going? Tell us more about it. Um, so there are key features like you can create a room, a room for your team, like I have the, the room, guess what? The name is Expert, right? The Expert Room. Um, but we also have yoga classes so that all, all the people who like yoga, they go to, to the yoga ones and things like that that we can create or you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with just one individual. You can share any files, you can, um, yeah, it's available everywhere. But the biggest thing about HipChat is the integration. The integration with our uh, own products, Jira, Confluence, and you name it, or with any other product that you might need to, to integrate with. Um, by this time, during Summit, there were uh, three billion message that, messages that had been sent with HipChat worldwide. Now it's about five billion and growing. That was the information I had last week, so you know, this thing's real. Now, we introduced also, and we announced during, um, during Summit, the video. I do video conferences with HipChat very, very often with my team. I have a team uh, in uh, Austin, Texas, in San Francisco, in Sydney, and we communicate through HipChat on the video, and it, it works perfect. It, was, it works really great. Also, um, during Summit, we announced the availability of HipChat uh, server version so that you can download and install it instead of you know, using it on the cloud as, as it was before. So it was, again, yet another um, good um, addition to, to the HipChat family. So here you, can, you see you can um, use your LDAP and connect to, to your whole company and you have all the contacts there in HipChat and off you go. You're ready to, to communicate. So, you want to have it a try if you haven't tried it yet um, hitchat.com server is there it's available and um, the, the, the price is, is really uh, very very low for the for the low entry I think <coughs> it's um, up to five users even free it, it's it's very very negligible in, in the lower scales right um, talking about the um, um, the integrations so as I said, it integrates with our, with our products out of the box, but if you need to build a, your own integration, it's pretty simple. So there is, there is a, um, a very simple API for that. And 
we announced during uh, Summit, um, we were talking during Summit, the day before that, Apple was releasing the iWatch, was announcing the iWatch, and we said, okay, we promised that we will release HipChat on iWatch as soon as it is released. We have the SDK already and we are working on it. So whenever you can get your iWatch on you, you can also use HipChat on it. Great, so <coughs> the second product that changed my professional life again tremendously was Confluence. So I remember that, um, you know, in the early days, Confluence was just, you know, a, a basically a wiki and a, a documentation sort of a, a product. And it evolved in a full-scale collaboration solution. So I remember in the early days, you know, changing, exchanging through email um, the first version of a PowerPoint. Go there, send it to someone. They send it back to you another version. You send another one and send another one. This is a platform where people can collaborate, and I'm talking about a non-IT, non-development kind of uh, need, right? But imagine in, in, a, in, a, in a project where you really need to collaborate and need to see versions, bugs, and, 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 and uh, different phases of your project, and, and so on. So yes, Confluence has become a real um, collaboration platform to most of our, our customers. And we announced some very cool features here. By the way, just to have an idea, who uses Confluence here? Okay, five more people than HitChat, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one is called the Roadmap Planner. Let me see if the movie, I don't know if uh, you can see it from the back there. So the whole idea here is to create a, um, um, a visualizing graph for um, a sort of a Roadmap Planner, which is very intuitive. You can label it any way, any way you want. You can, of course, you know, drag and drop the bars and extend it to plan, you know, when I want to release that part of my project or even for me, when I have my MBOs, uh, which are more business related, I track on that and say, okay, so I'll, I will um, plan the first project that I have for that date and the rest for the, for the other dates. Um, so you can separate it, you can put um, you know, a marker in each point, like this is the critical point. There are many ways you can, you can, you can do that. Um, but you can also do even better. You can use all the full capability of uh, Confluence by inserting a reference to a document that you created inside one of the boxes. And that's what uh, we're showing here. Create a page, you know, you can pick up one of the um, templates that, that exist in Confluence, or you can create your own, whatever you, uh, it's, it works best for you. And once you create that page, you will <coughs> add to the um, Roadmap Planner, and when someone clicks on, on that bar that we'll see in a minute, or just passes the pointer, we'll see, ah, there is a page there explaining more, what do you mean by mobile web? Okay, if that, those are the requirements, then you refer to that page and complete the cycle. So th this was the first thing we announced during, um, during this uh, summit, the roadmap planning. Uh, I will go a, a little bit quicker here, uh, I'm mindful of the time. The second one was inline comments. For those of you who um, use Confluence already, you may, let me see if it works, I think so, no, yeah. You know that when you see a sentence, you want to comment or something, you go all the way down the document, you add your comment, and then someone gets a notification and will talk about it. Right, so the next one, and this one I love, I, I was talking about the um, PowerPoint kind of version. That's exactly what we were working. Uh, we were uh, asked to produce a deck to send to new partners that would explain what we do, um, what, are, what is the value and why companies should think about you know, becoming our partners. So rather than exchanging again um, a PowerPoint or, or PDF files, we used the file collaboration uh, feature, the new one from Confluence. So basically you load up your image in this case and you ask your team, hey guys, here's my, uh, my first version and my first iteration, my first you know, go at, at this presentation. Let me know what you think. And people start then not only writing comments, inline comments, but you can write inside the image itself. So you go and create a little comment and then that a balloon shows up inside the image 
So all this that I told you about is already uh, included in the last version of Confluence, 5.7, if I'm not mistaken. The, this one is still to come, and you will understand why. It's a little bit more complicated. So the idea here is, again, is go a step further in terms of the collaboration. What happens here? I have a page. I'm creating a page, and I am, of course, working on a project that involves a number of people, and I want my colleagues to comment and say, hey, uh, how, how are you going? Well, how, what, can you please update your project status? I know, I want to know, how are you doing? Right, whilst I'm on, on that page, I can see that my colleagues are logging in, that they are in there. And whilst I type my part of the uh, update, they are typing it and I can see it as well, and they can see it, of course. So it's live editing. The page is being edited live whilst you work on it. So we are working on it. We hope to release it um, by the end of this year. But as you know, in a software world, promises can never be <laughs> taken too seriously, right? Great. So uh, this is it. I wanted just to give you a taste of um, who Atlassian is and what we do, what we offer, and what we announce during Summit. These were all promises during Summit, but we delivered. We released most of them. It's just the live editing which is coming, but as you can appreciate, it's, it's a little bit more effort. There were much, much more announced during Summit. Jira and, and uh, Jira Service Desk, but you know, in terms of time, I, I chose to focus on this one uh, for you. So with that, um, I don't know how to pronounce that, but I think you, you do. So <laughs> thank you very much, and uh, hope to see you soon. I'm, I'm here if you have any questions. You know, I, um, I'm the bridge between the expert and Atlassian. Thank you. <laughs>